Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ulrike and this channel is all about Korean skincare and just beauty and skincare in general. And today, this might surprise you, <laughs> but we are doing another sunscreen, Korean sunscreen review. I actually was at a point where I thought, you know what, no more sunscreen reviews because I have been doing quite a lot and they don't always to be honest do very well you don't seem that interested in them and i've also already done a recent review of a sunscreen that i have declared my favorite of the season and i still really really love that one it is absolutely in my top three the b plain moisture sunscreen fantastic sunscreen however i gotta say especially if you are more of an oily to combo skinned person ah, I may have another equally good if not better sunscreen favorite that deserves nay demands a review and it is um, this one which one is the right side this one <laughs> the numbers in clear filter sun essence In case you don't know the brand numbers in yet, they are an indie brand, a Korean indie brand that shot to fame around the time of the pandemic. A couple of their products went viral very quickly. They're still a young brand, but somehow they just managed to shoot it to the height of popularity pretty much instantaneously. And I've been speaking about their products for a while now to the point that they actually contacted me <laughs> and sent me a few products, which um, I don't accept PR from brands that often anymore because I often feel uh, it, it just comes with a lot of demands. And as long as I don't get paid to uh, work for certain brands, I always feel um, I should not agree to work, to free labor, just on the basis of products. So usually I now say no and also prefer the freedom of buying my own stuff and choosing my own stuff because very often brands just send you random stuff that you don't necessarily want and then they demand you to review it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just don't do it very often anymore, but when numbers in approached me, I said, yes, please, because I really do like this stuff. And one of the products that they sent me is their new sunscreen. This came out, I think, maybe June, July, I want to say. So just now, maybe May, May at the earliest. So uh, late spring, early summer. And I did see that it instantly went to the top of the bestseller list at Olive Young in the sunscreen category. So I was quite keen to try it, but I didn't know that much about it. And when I tried it, I was really, really impressed straight away pretty much. So this one just really has a very special and unique texture. It is kind of a runny and truly essence-like texture. Sometimes when they call it a sun essence, it's still kind of just a normal moisturizer, but this really has a very, very light, very light, very spreadable, uh, nearly oil-free, texture. So that's why I say very, very good for oilier skin types. This is also another one of those second generation Colma Korea made sunscreens. I have introduced you to a couple of other ones that have um, a number of really good stable filters, UV filters, and that especially, uh, particularly use the new L'Oreal filter that I still don't know how that works because it always says it's a L'Oreal exclusive filter. Somehow Colmar Korea must have bought the rights. Okay, maybe they franchise it out or something. I don't know how that works. But Colmar Korea, as far as I know, is not a part of L'Oreal and they are using this specific, very highly regarded um, new generation filter that L'Oreal developed and uh, so it is a, a very elegant a formula that I think, uh, personally, I think I like even a little bit better than that famous Beauty of Joseon Round Lab Birch sunscreen, first generation 2021 
formula that most popular Korean sunscreens are using. So as for what filters the sunscreen is using, as always, <laughs> I had to write them down. This time I really had to write them down carefully because I couldn't find a, a breakdown of the ingredients on Inky Decoder. This is still too new apparently. Maybe I should put it into the Inky Decoder webpage, we'll see. Uh, but I did uh, go through the entire ingredient list to sort them out. And as I said, they sounded very familiar. Familiar, uh, It is, I think, a formula that we will see more and more from newer sunscreens from Korea because it is that Colma Korea base formula, uh, but an upgraded version of their previous one, as I said. So the filters, I have to read them out. I cannot remember this by myself. Uh, the filters they use, they use five UV filters. Uvinol T150, which is a UVB filter, and then that L'Oreal exclusive UVA filter called Maxoril SX, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, I'm not sure. Maxoril SX. As I said, I don't know how it works that Colmar can use it because supposedly only L'Oreal can use it for its own formulas. I'm guessing it's kind of like a like a licensed licensing agreement or something. I don't know, but it is part of the formula. Uh, Uvinol A+, which is a UVA filter, and Polysilicone 15, UVB filter, and then a Tinosorb S, which is a broad spectrum filter. All of those are chemical filters, so this is a purely chemical sunscreen. And you know what that means, no white cast, which I can confirm. At first I wasn't sure because it does seem kind of cloudy when you put it on, but it melts into skin pretty much invisibly. I'm fairly certain that this should also work for dark skinned people. As always, because I am pale myself, I cannot 100% guarantee it. Whenever I can find someone with darker skin who has tried and reviewed this, I will make sure to link this. I'm going to check if I can find someone, but I would say just based on the formula and trying it out myself, this should be pretty much transparent on all skin tones. Apart from the UV filters, which of course are very important, there are more reasons just based on ingredients alone why I like this formula so much. This contains, and this is kind of a numbers in specialty, I want to say, this contains a number of very soothing, calming, plant-based ingredients. Centella Asiatica, Metacasticide, Hutuinia Cordata, and then also antioxidant resurrection plant, very in at the moment in uh, Korean skincare I've noticed, plus Jericho rose extract, also very en vogue at the moment, is often used in sensitive skincare because it's supposed to be very soothing and calming, and it's also rich in antioxidants. And of course, Centella Asiatica, Hutuinia Cordata, Metacasticide, those are all very anti-inflammatory, retinous, combating type ingredients. The whole formula, and hence also the uh, green packaging, is meant specifically for sensitive, oily, acne-prone, but also especially retinous-prone skin types. This also contains brightening licorice root water. Licorice root extract and water, I cannot sing its praises high enough. Heavily underrated. When it comes to brightening, for me, this is one of the best ingredients I know, where I always see a difference in the overall texture and overall sort of just vivaciousness of my skin. More so almost than with vitamin C, which is um, controversial. I admit it, but it is it is just anecdotally what I see on my skin when I use licorice root extract. So it contains licorice root water, uh, plus also a bit of niacinamide, which is always good for brightening, pore care, um, skin barrier, health, etc., etc. Now, as for whether or not this is moisturizing slash hydrating, this is a real hydration bomb. In fact, <laughs> it contains a whopping. 10 types of hyaluronic acids, uh, plus glycerin, plus humectant algae extract, as well as aloe vera extract. So chock full with hydration, uh, plus alcohol and fragrance free. You can, you can start to see why I'm excited about this one, right? So 
very sensitive skin friendly formula very hydrating and there's just something very special about the texture as always you get a texture shot of course somewhere in there <laughs> within my rant if I had to describe the texture, I really think it's runniness and lightness is the main thing I want to stress. It really just kind of almost turns into liquid when you apply it, which also means that it absorbs really fast. It also really doesn't have any oiliness or stickiness to it. It almost has that sort of dry touch texture that is always advertised for European sunscreens, which honestly, I don't think they have that texture. <laughs> Personally, I still always find them a little bit greasy, often, I don't know. As a European, I'm not always a fan of European sunscreen. I just don't find them that great for everyday use. They're better for like high uh, exposure. When it comes to like hiking or being in the sun for really long, I would always go for European sunscreens, but for everyday use, I would always choose a Korean or Japanese sunscreen. So with this one, I really feel it does live up to that dry touch promise that we often hear from European sunscreens. It really just doesn't have any oiliness at all. And so it also just feels very pleasant on the skin. It is very comfortable also for reapplication works fantastic for reapplication because it doesn't disturb the makeup because it just kind of sinks in really really fast um this is spf 50 plus and pa quadruple plus which is kind of the standard for most of the popular sunscreens and since i've seen especially on tiktok yet again a lot of people kind of down down the downplaying the efficacy of Korean skin sunscreens, I just wanted to stress yet again that there's no reason not to trust in particular the Colma Korea made sunscreens. All the ones that were ever retested during the scandal, which is three years ago, they all passed the testing with flying colors. There's no reason to doubt the efficacy of Korean sunscreens. And there's no reason, unless you live in very intense high exposure sort of countries, such as Australia, to be hysterical about not getting the coverage that you need. I just wanted to stress that because TikTok keeps showing me uh, non-key beauty influencers that keep sort of shitting on Korean sunscreens. And it's starting to make me really annoyed because they usually also aren't Asian. So it feels a little bit racist when a person who looks like me wants to judge Asian skincare and say that it's not safe without any basis, factual basis. So yeah, I would say you could trust this with all Korean sunscreens because they are so lightweight. The only thing that I always kind of see when you are out in the sun for very long, you might not use enough of them because you just kind of, they. They spread so well that there is a, a chance to not use enough of them. That's the only risk I see. But for everyday use, I would say these are all safe and they are so comfortable and elegant. This one in particular, one of the most pleasant textures I can think of. The reason that it works so well in particular for uh, redness prone oily blemish prone skin is because it really just doesn't have any greasiness uh, it also has a bit of a greenish tint which can help a little bit to counteract the redness although it's not very strong and it does kind of disappear quickly when you rub it in but it does confirm that it is meant specifically for redness prone skin However, I do have to stress that even though I would recommend it for oily skin, I have to say it does not dry down matte. So it doesn't have any mattening effect, uh, mattifying, <laughs> mattifying, mattifying effect. And it does leave a tiny bit of a sheen. It is a tiny bit dewy, not overly crazily so. It doesn't leave your skin like day place donut style dewy. But if you expect any type of oil combating power from this, that I cannot promise. I can only promise that it won't feel like it aggravates the oiliness because it has that 
very, very light, liquid, almost liquid formula. However, again, I would say it is really fantastic for oilier skin types. I think it can also work for dry skin. Just be aware that it's not very moisturizing. If you want a really great moisturizing, rich, but not too rich, elegant sunscreen release from this year, then go with the Be Plain one, which I have reviewed on the channel, which I still absolutely love. Those two at the moment, this one from Numbers In and the Be Plain one, for me, they're neck and neck. It just depends on what type of texture you want and what your specific skin type prefers. Sensitive skin will do well with both of them because they're both very, very gentle, unless you have specific sensitivities to any of the ingredients, of course, that are in the formula. And there you have it. Another sunscreen review, even though I told myself I should stop with the sunscreen reviews. <laughs> hopefully it helped. Uh, hopefully, maybe you finally found that one sunscreen that you always wanted to find. And I hope I helped you with your purchasing choice. And if you found this helpful, it would be fantastic if you gave it a thumbs up. I hate always asking for this, but it is unfortunately so important. Uh, as well as subscribing, which is the most important thing for us to see growth on this heavily competitive platform. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed yet, or if you're new here, truly this is the best uh, and most appreciated way to support me. I always post a video every week, so I will see you again next week. Leave comments if you have any questions, queries, or if you've already tried the sunscreen, or if you have another sunscreen that you think I desperately need to try. Uh, there are tons of other sunscreen reviews on this channel as well, so make sure to check those out if you still want more recommendations. And I see you again next week. Until then, please take care. Bye.